Hello, everyone. Today we will talk about MMA style front push kick. The push kick is a foundational movement in MMA style fighting, which requires a strong skill set. Let's take a quick look at some of these examples in the video. Right here. There's a jumping front kick. Another front kick. There are other variations like you just saw, but today we're gonna to talk about just the front push kick. To execute the front push kick in the sagittal plane, it requires maximum stability, dynamic balance, considerable force and momentum. For simplicity, let's assume the practitioner Practitioner initiates the movement from a wide base staggered stance. The right leg is standing leg or the stance leg, and the left leg is the kicking leg. Upon completion of the kick, the left leg will return to the start position. Primary muscle groups involved in this movement are the gluteal muscles, hip flexors, hip extensors, lower leg, anterior, lateral, and posterior muscle compartments, and the abdominal group. You can see example of the staggered stance and then the line of play directly forward. Action of the stance leg. In the push kick, body weight is transferred from two legs to one. Isometric contraction in the closed kinetic chain of the weight bearing right leg allows for increased joint stability while the opposite hip joint extends to prep for the movement of the kick can see in the example of this video here, while walking, all of the muscles are essentially being used. So it's just about timing and the phases of the movement where you can analyze what muscle groups are actually contracting or eccentrically contracting. <clears throat> so from the ground up, Intrinsic muscles of the front of the foot from the dorsal to plantar surfaces stabilize the numerous joints within the grounded foot. The talocrural joint is stabilized by lower leg muscles, the anterior compartment, tibialis anterior, peronis tertitis, extensor digitorum longus, and extensor halis longus, lateral compartment, peroneus longus, and brevis superficial posterior compartment, gastrocnemius, soleus, and plantaris. Deep posterior compartment, flexor digitorum longus, flexor halis longus, and tibialis posterior. So during the entire movement from start to finish, all of the leg muscles are working. Action of the right stance leg. Isometric contraction, co-contraction of the quadricep and hamstring group stabilizes the standing leg knee joint in extension. These muscles cross the knee, therefore they act upon that joint. The standing leg hip joint is stabilized isometrically by the pelvic muscles, the iliopsoas, hip flexors, hip extensors, and adductor muscles of the medial compartment. The right ilium or the right half of the pelvis is in right transverse pelvic rotation because the left hip is an extension and internal rotation to prep for the kick. From here, the preparatory phase begins with concentric contraction of the hip flexor group to lift the kicking leg off the ground. Another example of a front kick. And in this example, he goes right back to the standing starting stance. Here is an example of hip flexor action from the hip. Movement phase of the left leg kicking action. The agonist muscles, iliopsoas, rectus femoris, pectineus, and sartorius concentrically contract collectively to produce left hip acetabulofemoral flexion and horizontal adduction, while the antagonist muscles, the glute maximus, 
bicep femoris long head semi-tendinosis, semi-membranosis, eccentrically contract collectively to allow hip flexion. From start to finish, there is left hip internal rotation produced by agonist muscles, glute medius, glute minimus, and uh, TFL. Also, there is left knee joint extension throughout movement produced by the anterior compartment agonist muscles, rectus femoris, and the vastus muscles. There is a moment of slight lumbar flexion as the leg lifts to kick. This action is produced by agonist muscles, rectus abdominis, external and internal obliques. The antagonist muscle, quadratus lumborum, eccentrically contracts to allow for the lumbar flexion. To make impact with the calcaneus, the anterior compartment concentrally contracts to cause dorsiflexion at the talocrural joint. Follow through phase of the left leg kicking action. Aggregate muscle groups of the leg essentially reverse actions to control the descent and deceleration of the kicking leg to return to starting position. This is known as the follow through phase that ends in the return to starting position or the recovery phase. Collectively, the muscles that generated the force to kick are now eccentric eccentrically contracting to lower the left kicking leg. The movement terminates at the recovery phase where the muscles once again concentrically contract to prep for the next movement. And again, here's the same video. See the action. Front kick, front kick, and then hip flexion. Primary hip flexor origin and insertion. So the primary hip flexors are psoas major, iliacus, rectus femoris, sartorius, and pectineus. They all sort of originate on the lower spine and the front of the pelvis, and then they run down onto the femur bone, either the, less, either the trochanter or directly into the uh, patellar tendon and onto the tibia and fibula of the lower leg. Medial compartment, primary hip adductors, adductor brevis, adductor longus, adductor magnus, and gracilis. These, this group has their origin on um, the pubic rami of the pelvis, and then they insert just below the linea aspera of the femur. Primary hip extensors, origin and insertion. This group, semi-tendinosis, semi-membranosis, biceps femoris, the long head, glute max, glute medius, glute minimus. They all originate on the ischial tuberosities and then insert onto the lower leg, fibula and tibia respectively. You can see on the posterior side how they cross the knee and insert on the upper tibia fibula, just below the knee. Primary knee extensors, origin and insertion, rectus femoris, vastus intermedius, vastus lateralis, vastus medialis. You can see here in the video, knee going from flexion to extension. The anterior compartment muscles are concentrically contracting to draw the foot forward. These muscles have their origin on the anterior inferior iliac spine, the femur, the intertrochanteric line, and the whole length of the linea aspera. And they insert and terminate into the patella and the patellar tendon, which terminates and inserts on the tibial tuberosity. Primary ankle joint dorsiflexors, origin and insertion, extensor digitorum longus, extensor hallus longus, tibialis anterior. These all originate on the tibia or fibula respectively, and then they insert onto the base or the plantar aspect 
of the foot. Or excuse me, the uh, dorsal aspect of the foot. You can see here to cause flexion, dorsiflexion. How to strengthen the leg muscles. Here's a modified regression, sit to stand. You can use this for someone who is maybe injured or elderly or deconditioned. Then going from two legs to one leg is a progression, the assisted pistol squat. You see you're still using um, a bench or a box to help support the movement. And then to collectively strengthen all of the leg muscles, we want to load the muscles using a barbell for the back squat. And you can see here, the gentleman in the picture is holding a barbell across the shoulders and lowering himself very similar to the action as you would in the sits to sand. Another progression would be a squat kick. It's more of a dynamic exercise, cardio exercise, but in order to get good at a certain movement, you have to practice that movement. So this would be a good way to practice a front kick and also building power in the legs, dynamic flexibility. You can see that very similar action to what we're looking for in the MMA style front kick. How to stretch the leg muscles, starting with the modified regressions, reclining hand to foot with a strap. So if you can't reach your hand, you would use a yoga strap or a belt. Isometrically contract the leg muscles, lifting one leg into its closest end range and holding it there for a duration of time. Um, 30 seconds to minute and a half, three minutes, depending on how much time you have. Another progression would be Ardha Hanumanasana or half monkey pose. This is half the, sp half the splits. A progression would be Utita Hasta Panangustasana, extended hand to foot. So again, we're practicing balance flexibility. And then an advanced progression would be for the full variation of the middle splits or Hanumanasana, monkey pose. You can see here in the picture, pretty much all of the muscles of the lower body, the lower extremities are being used and stretched. A common injury is hip bursitis. Bursitis is inflammation of the bursa, which are fluid-filled sacs that act as cushions to reduce friction at a joint. In the hip, there are two major bursae, the trochanter, trochanteric and the ischial or iliopsoas bursa. Hip bursitis is, common, is a common sports-related condition caused by chronic overuse or acute trauma. Signs and symptoms include pain around the hip, tenderness, stiffness in the hip joint, which decreases range of motion, difficulty walking or sitting. Common causes are repetitive stress injury from overuse, like using a stair climber um, machine, incorrect form when landing from a jump, a hip pointer fall, or extended periods of sitting. This can be remedied by RICE or police protocol, rest, ice compression, elevation, protection, optimal loading, ice compression, elevation, heat, ice, non-steroidal non anti-inflammatory drugs, corticosteroid injections, physical therapy, or surgery in a very severe case. This is my presentation of multi-joint movement, MMA style front kick my name is Marcelo. Thank you.